Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to bead with the Piote stitch. Okay, now to start this beading we're using artificial sinew and we want to take an arm's length something that's long enough that you can work with. Too long it gets uncomfortable. So we'll cut about an arm's length, maybe a little bit longer. Okay, that's about three or so feet. Now with this sinew, we want to tear it apart. And we put this aside and do, do that again. We'll get about four strips from this one piece of sinew. Okay, we're using a number 11 and you want to string an even number of beads on your thread. And we need to have enough to go around and still be loose. Now there's <clears throat> been a few times where I counted wrong and I had too many beads and rather than try to untie what I do is take my pliers or side cuts and snap one of the beads rather than try to unthread or untie Okay, you can see there I have about a quarter inch gap. And what I'm going to do now is move the beads towards the end of the thread. I'm hanging on to the one end. And now what I'm going to do is take my needle and start threading through these and go all the way around. I don't think you noticed, I did not count the number of beads. So if it's off, I'll snap one of the beads, like I was saying earlier, with my pliers. Now I'm tying the end. Now to start I'm going to make a black band so I'm going to go around this a few times with black. So we pick up a bead, we work one bead at a time. Uh, what I like to do is hide the knot. So I'm going to take this through a few of the beads. There I picked up four of them. So now this is going to start away from the knot. So we take the one bead and we loop every other one. And you can see I'm skipping every other. Pick a bead up. It's coming out here. Go across that one. Pass this one. And thread this one.
pick a bead up. The first row might be a little hard to see. When we get to the next row, it'll be a lot easier, more obvious. This is the Peyote stitch and I'm sewing it on a Cheyenne Peyote rattle. This is the start, this last one, and I had a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong, so I am correct. I don't have to break one of my beads. Now that's probably an unorthodox method that I do, breaking the beads, but I found that's the simplest way. Now, I need to come up for my third row, that we just did the second row. The third row has to jump up. So if you look closely, let me zoom a little bit more in. Okay, if you look close, this is the bead I have to go through. Now, I'm going to go through this one, and I'm going to go through the one, the first one that I started on the second row. So I'm going to go through two beads. This one. And then we have to go through the one on this row. So we went through two beads. That's jumped us up for the third row. Okay, now with this row, there's going to be a gap, and we fill the gap with a bead. Go through the same way. This, this is actually a lot easier now. And we'll go all the way around this way until uh, we get to where we have to jump a bead. Like we just did. And that will jump us up to the fourth row. See, we need a bead in there. It may seem a little loose, but as we add more beads and get a few more rows on there, this is going to tighten up and squeeze the handle, squeeze the leather on really tight. Once you get a few rows on, the pattern will be a lot more obvious and it will allow you to go a lot quicker. Now when you have to add thread, so if I'm going to add right where I finished, what I want to do is run this thread around. So I'm going to weave this through some of the beads in the lower level. Once you go a bit of ways, you can cut it. You have to remember where you have to pick up your pattern. Now, you're going to add a new thread, and we're going to do the same thing how I just ended. I'm going to thread up and try, not try, I'm going to come out to where I need to add my bead. So I stopped at my pattern, so I'm going to come out here and add 
a bead and then continue. So I'll start back in here. And I'll zigzag this back and forth. I want to come out there, right there, and now we add our bead. And right now we're working blue. Now that I'm working different colors, it might be a little easier to see, but as you continue around and you need to jump to the next row that's where you have to feed it through two beads one on this level and one up here so it's going to go through this one and that one And this sometimes is where you need pliers to pull it through. Right there. One thing I would like to point out when you're putting beads on is keeping the row of beads in a straight line. And if you're not careful how you're doing this, you can pull the the bead and make them spiral. And what I do when I'm adding the bead, string the bead, then each bead is tightened and I'll push the string upward this direction. Most people have a tendency when they tighten the uh, bead they just go and pull it this way every time you do this it nudges the whole group of beads in a spiral so I will tighten that way each time then right here I have to jump to the next row so we go through the two beads and you can see the needle right there you see it's going through these two beads and that jumps it to the next row and sometimes when you're going through the two it makes it a little more difficult to feed it through To finish the peyote weave, when you get to the very end, what you want to do is start going around. This will strengthen the outer perimeter and it also ties the cord. When you get all the way around, then work it work it back down through and you can zigzag, go back and forth. then trim it. We're going to secure it with a couple drops of super glue. And 
and then hit it with the Insta set. Okay, now on here where we cut and added, we just take a flame and singe off the ends of the threads. This was how to bead with the peyote stitch. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.